include everything. All right, guys, take number two. Mike is not muted this time. Let's go. We're, <laughs> we are going to do a little bit of styling, the bare minimum. Um, I'm not the best at styling. I, I don't really, it's just not my thing. But uh, I'm going to show you the few things that I do just to kind of clean it up. So uh, the where I usually start is start by targeting the body. So let's go ahead and set a background-image. And you can set a URL here to where the image is at. Now, uh, if you're hosting your own image, definitely go ahead and do that. I'm just taking this from a site called Unsplash. I'll be making a um, great resource site uh, for web developers pretty soon, and this will be one of the things I highly recommend. Uh, I'm not sponsored or anything by them. I've just been using their content for quite some time. We're going to set a font family to Lobster. So uh, Lobster is not a default font, so you'll notice that it is not working here. Oh, it is. I imported it uh, last attempt here. So in our header, we imported the uh, the font family from Google's uh, APIs where they store the fonts, fonts like Google APIs. So that's why our font is working. So we got a nice little font going on here. Change the color so it's a little more uh, easy to see. We also want the background dash size to cover the whole thing so we don't have to worry about anything not being in frame and all that sort of good stuff so that's our body we basically just are doing a little bit of the bare minimum again um, the next thing that we can do is go ahead and let's target our header here um, again we use a, a hashtag to target IDs so we use our header and within here all we want to do is create a background and we're going to use RGBA this is going to allow us to uh, do the color and if it's see-through or not. So the last one is to see-through. We're going to set it at 0.5. And you'll see we can kind of see through it quite a bit. Um, we're going to add a border to this as well. First thing that comes first is how, first thing in border comes is how, how thick do you want the border, what color, and what style. So we're going to do solid. Um, and make sure you spell border right. There's all, uh, another one is dashed. Uh, there's one or two more. So I don't fully remember what they are off the top of my head. We're going to go back to solid. Um, that's all we're going to do for right here. Um, actually, uh, we're going to curve the corners as well. I love curved corners. I don't know if it looks better. I just, there's something about it that is just so me. I don't know. Um, You'll notice we have these images that are not looking as sharp as I want them to be, and they're all multiple sizes. So we're just going to change those to 100 pixels. Uh, you can change the width to 100 px. They're all squares for the most part. So everything's looking much more uh, reasonable. All the other ones were a little too big. Um, the next thing that I, I want to do is make them in circles. The way that you can make anything into a circle is by setting border radius to 50%. And again, make sure you use the R in border, the second one. So there's our circles. That's all we're going to do for images. Now, if we had other images that we were inserting into our HTML, we'd want to create a class and not just target all images. Um, if you remember correctly, uh, we also made it so that everything in here is using uh, some bootstrap classes. So we're going to target those bootstrap classes. We're just going to add a little bit of padding. All these are a little too close. So we're going to add padding of about 10 pixels. And this is going to give it a nice little space. We can actually probably even go to maybe 5 pixels. So we'll add 5 pixels padding. And uh, remember, each one of these is a row. So we want to target the rows and add a background and some color to them as well. So we use the dot because it's a class. We're going to set the background here. Uh, same way we did before. Now looking back, be because our two classes are near identical, um, this would have been a good example of how to use uh, SAS. So in future videos, I'll try and do that. Uh, get everyone kind of caught up with how SAS works. So we're going to set a border to this as well. Uh, set white. And then solid. And 
Now, why isn't our background setting here? All right. Oh, because we didn't put a comma here. So there's our background. Everything's kind of touching. We don't really like that. Um, but before we change that, let's go ahead and set the border dash radius to 25 pixels because I like those curved corners. There's that. And then let's go ahead and just add a margin dash bottom to about 10 px here. If anything, we can actually go ahead and just set this whole thing to margin. Let's see how that looks. And so that gives us a little space in here, a little space in here and then everything's kind of evenly spaced. Let's go ahead and check this out in the full page view. So here is our page. Not too shabby. We have, uh, we've completed all the user stories and um, this is really the bare minimum that you should do when styling a page. Um, but I hope you guys found this kind of helpful. Um, again, um, style it as you as your preference is. But as always, guys, thank you to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. Thank you for the likes, the subs, and, um, the comments, and the shares. It all really helps a ton. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which will probably be the tic-tac-toe game. So uh, keep an eye out for that, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the video. My good friend Matt at Engineered Truth has a three-part interview with Quincy Larson, the founder of Free Code Camp. Go ahead and check that out, and you'll get a lot of really cool stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.